Good evening everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I thought it was about time that I did a, an update uh, on my Wars of the Roses project, seeing as that's the thing that I'm talking about quite a lot um, on the stream and on the social media and I realised I hadn't actually done a video update on anything yet. Uh, I have been, you know, cracking on with it and I've got a couple of things to show off and I'll also just talk you through what I'm planning on doing and actually show you what I've bought. So this is the first uh, unit that I've done um, and as you probably are aware I'm working on Richard Neville, the 16th Earl of Warwick's forces, um, otherwise known to history as the Kingmaker and I'm building out all of his forces um, with his known retainers. Uh, mainly for the early period of the Wars of the Roses, but also so I can use him as an opposing force against my other Yorkists in, say, the later period. So this is the standard size unit that I use in the Hail Caesar um, uh, games that we play, where we've um, sort of put together our own um, change on the rules based on the ones that Rick Priestley wrote that you can find on the Perry Miniatures Facebook page. Um, and this is a standard household of troops and that comes with two bases of bowmen and one base of bill and hand-to-hand -hand combat troops they're all based separately so if i do play move to another uh, system which you know or i play another system rather like never mind the bill hooks i can separate them out and i have units of just bill and just bow so as you can see i generally base four or five archers to a base and then I cram quite a few onto that middle base that has the bill. This being the Earl of Warwick, and given how wealthy he was, I want to have his livery and I want to have pennants for him everywhere. So I'm chucking in more flags than I would normally, um, including like this livery fat flag here that has the, uh, the bear and the ragged staff on it. Can't see that because obviously I've... Uh, I've curled it up, um, but you'll see on one of the other miniatures I've done as well, I've got these little pennants that I can just put flying throughout his ranks. So what I've done is I've included one of Warwick's retainers here. This is Sir John Constable, High Sheriff of Yorkshire. Um, there were quite a few High Sheriffs of Yorkshire at the time. Um, they kept on, he's a post that kept on going backwards and forwards. Um, and But he was basically, basically one of Warwick's cronies. Um, he did stay loyal i believe in the later period but certainly in, in the run-up he was uh counted among the earl of, one of the earl of warwick's uh trusted retainers now just because you say he's the the sheriff of yorkshire to, just to give you a, sort of sort of an idea um it's you might not know but the sheriff is the oldest sort of crown office in in the country um and he is basically responsible for the law enforcement in all of Yorkshire. Now, Yorkshire is Warwick's stronghold. That's where he's got the majority of his lands, his castles, and his power base is there. And the noble families there generally support him rather than, say, Edward. Um, so John Constable, um, I thought would be quite good just to have him in, in, in there um, leading some household troops. He won't have any in-game effects he's he's just there he's just mixed in and it, he's just a, a unit commander just a personality in there um what i've tried to do is make things a bit interesting on these bases i've got so many spares now for the wars of the roses uh and for, uh, off the european sprue as well that i tried to create some more interesting um positions for troops i mix in headgear all across the range um and also bodies and just try and try and you know just just create things here so i thought it'd be quite fun here to have these three longbowmen firing and then this guy who's uh woken up late to the battle sort of legging it forward he hasn't even got his bow out of his uh out of his bag yet and his arrows are, are still in their arrow bag as well um so he's running now the arms for this are from the light cavalry set um, but as I've said before, the, the level of um, sort of interchangeability across this um, this range is fantastic, and it really allows you to create some cool stuff. Uh, spare sheaves of arrows there. So this guy here, the guy, John Constable himself, is actually a kit bash between three different kits. The body is from the command sprue of the. Um, Bill and Bow infantry set from Perry. The arms are from the men at arms set, and the uh, the head is actually from the European set. So uh, so you can get some awesome looking poses and some really really varied looking miniatures. 
and you'll see throughout the ragged staff livery symbol for the Earl of Warwick. So that's exactly it. I think sometimes when people are thinking of playing the Wars of the Roses, they think that every single noble would have had his own livery. And yes, a lot of them did, but not all of them. Uh, you know, mine and ability like this guy, who's, who's the high sheriff, he might have had a few men, maybe a household, maybe, maybe he brought 50 men to the battle. But when they're, because he's retained to Warwick, his men would be wearing Warwick's livery. They're, they're his men. That's that's part of his um, deal, basically. You know, Warwick is his good lord. Warwick looks after him. Warwick will reward him. He has to supply Warwick with men. And then those men would wear his livery. So I like to um, sort of, you know, mix, you know, mix in the, these guys here. But you certainly, you know, wouldn't see... He might have it. Some of them have their own badges and livery, but it'd only be some very, very close retainers that would still wear those. The rest of them would probably just, you know, sew on the, uh, the ragged staff badge. Clearly identify that their lord is in the service of the Earl of Warwick, um, and therefore so are they. So that's the, the first um, load of, of Bill and Bo. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take these off and just pop them on one side, and then I'll get out the next unit. Now, very, very similar. Um, this time I haven't got a personality as such leading them. Um, and I wanted this unit to be have a bit more manpower in it than the last one. I thought the last one, because it had the flags, looked quite cool spread out. But this one I wanted more men. So again, mixed all the way across the range. And I've added something else. So I'm really, really pleased with this chap here. And this, this miniature here, this bare head, this, is, uh, this isn't Perry. I know, sacrilege. Uh, this, if I can get it to focus again, there we go, this is from CP models, CP miniatures, and basically they make a range of generic metal heads, male, female, aliens, you know, you can, you can chuck them all in, so, and they seem, they seem to be scaled quite well. A little bit of cleanup required, but no, I just fixed him in and got a spare helmet, just like he's discarded it to command the archers that he's he's looking after. And then again, just showing you some kit bashing. This guy here holding the bow in his left hand, kind of looking where his arrow has gone. Those arms, I think, are also off of the uh, the light cavalry set. Actually, they might be off the European set. I can't remember. I've got so many now. So again, endless kit bashing opportunities. So. Here we have uh, the base of Billman and uh, the hand-to-hand -hand combat types um, in the middle. So as you can see, I've added another uh, livery flag. This one came uh, with the Perry, so this is what, more like one of the pennants. I put one like this on my bombard set. And again, I've just tried to vary the poses in the heads. Um, this guy here is quite fun. The shield is from the mercenary set. The arms are from the light cavalry set. Head, can't remember just to get a bit more of an imposing, you know, I'm standing here with Warwick's colours. So I don't necessarily always chuck um, like an armoured guy at the front, but, you know, I quite like the idea that this guy's sort of hanging back a bit while this guy waves the flag. And then just try and get some, some heads and faces of people who actually look like they're about to, you know, get stuck in. There we go. And, um, of course, the cool thing here is, if I get these off, now those are two separate units if we're looking at Hail, Hail Caesar or, you know, but... Um, I can easily mix them together quite simply, they should all fit and then we have a big block there we go of Bill and Bow so that is the sort of main start of my troops um, for Warwick and as I said before if I want to I can vary those out so there you go, I've got like a, a Bill unit at the front still looks quite good and uh, or and I can split that out and have two separate units for for bows if I'm playing never mind the bill hooks some people have asked me how I play never mind the bill hooks uh, with this because I don't I can't do figure removal well most of the units in never mind the bill hooks have a unit uh, have six models so I basically say a base regardless of how many models is on it has six wounds, it has six models on it. You know, it's, it's irrelevant how many they have. You know, the way that we play, we're quite happy with that. So each of these, we just have wound markers that we put on them, um, and then we uh, remove a base once it takes six wounds. So no matter how many models are on it, it just counts as having six. That's straightforward enough, haven't had any problems so far. So there we go. So that's what I've finished um, to date for Warwick. Oh, and of course the, uh, the Bombard. 
um, which uh, if you want to go and see it, I've put the link for the video up here. But just to give you an idea of what I've got um, coming up, um, I've still got, even after doing all of those, I've still got another nine miniatures from the, the Bill and Bow box left to do. So I'm going to get another household unit out of that because I've got so many spares and I've also been buying a few other things, which is including these from Steel Fist Miniatures. A couple of Renaissance Knights and uh, some just late medieval guys so these will go in as commanders other retainers that i want to do with different coats of arms very very nice models scale very very well with the perry stuff um i don't think i'm gonna have any issues there which is cool um and uh so i've got three of those that i can mix in as sort of command types uh, some of these uh, these guys here i'm going to try and mix in and also i thought it'd be fun i've bought these medieval hounds they're going to make their way onto a onto a command base. Uh, on top of that, I haven't even opened these yet. I've got another 38 foot knights to do. So these are going to be create my heavy infantry, my men at arms. I should be able to get mm, three, maybe two medium sized units and three uh, one small unit out of there with those. I've also got, because it's kicking around, because I've just been sorting through my sprues, enough here to, for 24 uh, pikemen, or, well, say pikemen, some uh, pikemen, halberdiers, crossbowmen, um, and I've still got one of the command frames there. So I've got a, a secret project uh, in mind with these. So using this set, and I'm actually going to open this. I don't even know why I bothered showing it. There you go. Someone actually wants to look it up. EA13. Um... I've just doing a lot of research around Warwick and there's um, a few people that I, I characters I want to create. So I'm going to be doing something quite um quite special with this one um which will also be my uh, my entry for this uh World War of the Roses uh painting uh vignette competition. Um so if you haven't checked that out go and check that out. I'll leave a link to it in the uh the description below. And then of course we have the uh the man himself I can find him. Ah, oh, stupid Perry Wool. I hate this stuff. I, ah, there we go. So, where is he? Here he is. So, here is the Perry model of the Kingmaker. There he is, Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick. Now, um, I, okay, so first things first, I really do like this model. I like the pose. I like, I like the fact it's on a rearing horse and it's got a very sort of you know masterful air about it one thing i quite want on it though is i want a livery coat on him so i can try and paint warwick's uh, impossible uh coat of arms i'll put a picture of it up here in the corner and you can have a look at it for some reason i do want to paint that i think you know it'll be it will stand out he will look he'll look awesome in it i had had a go at green stuffings um some livery coats but because you've already got all the belts and things molded on it didn't quite look right so I've got some options. We do have um, this one here, who's wearing one, but this is meant to be his dad, but he's obviously not in, uh, That's this is the Earl of Salisbury, um, who died at Wakefield, but he isn't in as quite a sort of nice pose um, as the other one. And this fella here is, oh, that's meant to be Richard of York. So that's meant to be the Duke of York. Uh, that's meant to be Edward's um, Edward's father, who also basically these two, these two died at uh, died at Wakefield, uh, and uh, and his Warwick, who eventually died at Barnet. Um, so I haven't quite decided yet. I probably I will probably use this model, but I'm looking into some other miniatures I could potentially use um, or um, or play around with. So um, I, I'll definitely be be using that one. I'll be painting that one up. I just he might not always be. Warwick though, um, it, that's the thing, he hasn't got a surcoat on, he can, he can be somebody else. Um, all of these uh, minis are based on war bases, 60 by 45, and they're 2 mil thick, this is what me and my opponent agreed to do, so uh, you know, fairly standard, um, fairly standard fare, um, and um, my plan is to just carry on just plugging away at these as I, as I can. Um, 
I wanted to get the bill and bow units out the way first because they're usually the most numerous. Um, and um, what we're going to be doing as well, some lots of people, some lots, depends what you consider lots, have asked us about the stats and the rules that we we've been using and and like uh, adding to. Um, we're always adding to it. Um, basically, we're we're creating rules for commanders, some situational rules. We've got some um, sort of rules that we're going to play test for. Um, uh, bribing people <laughs> which happened a lot in the wars of the roses um and um what we're going to do we do have them in a document that me and my opponent um like share with each other um once we've sort of tested it a few more times um i'll um uh, probably just put it out to uh, on a on a google share if other people are interested if they want to give it a try or if they've got any suggestions and it'll be a bit of a, a living document and people can add to it um it's all based on the um the original um rules that rick Priestley put together for the perry games however we found that those were quite broad and we've now gone a little bit deeper and a little bit further um so we've added in things like um, specific commanders uh, if you want these mixed units, what if you don't want these mixed units? Uh, weather, uh, misfire chart for the uh, for the cannons, um, some different rules for the cavalry, um, just little things. Some ha basically house rules, but um, until a supplement comes out from Warlord covering um, the Wars of the Roses, which I I don't know, I don't even think there's one planned. Then um, there isn't one for Hail Caesar. Of course, you have got never mind the bill hooks as well, which has got you covered um, completely. They're two very very different games. Um, never mind the bill hooks being much more of a large skirmish, small battle game, uh, on not such the same scale as Hail Caesar. Hail Caesar being a lot more about um, battlefield control and um, and obviously command, which uh, which I really enjoy and. Uh, we're, we're hopefully now we've got a date for when this is going to end as long as everything goes well um the wars of the roses will be featuring very very heavily in the battle reports i know it's been napoleonics a lot um but the wars of the roses will be coming back we've got some games planned the first game back is probably just going to be an all-out battle because we've both been painting and painting and we just want to put everything on the table um and then we'll see what happens Anyway, that was a bit of a ramble, just a bit of an update on uh, on what's going on. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. Um, if you've got any questions, pop them down below. Um, I'm considering doing a another uh, history video. The only one, uh, the reason I didn't do a, an in-depth one on John Constable is there's not a lot to say about him. Um, he, we do have a copy of his his will. He wasn't hugely uh, rich when he died in uh, 1473, uh, but the one thing that I did find funny about it is that in his um, in his will he does name his children um, uh, Ralph, William, John, Jeanette, Margaret, and Isabel. And the only thing he really kind of points out is he wants uh, Jeanette, his daughter, to be made a woman of religion. So he, on his deathbed, in his will, he basically stipulated that his daughter was to be carted off to a nunnery. <laughs> So um, that's that's really the only thing I could find that was really of of interest about him. Um, I have got some uh, some other histories and research I'm putting together on some of the other uh, key retainers of Warwick, and of course there is the Earl of Warwick himself. Now, um, if people are interested in me doing a history video on him i can there's a lot of material out there it probably can't all be covered in a single video or the single video would probably be about an hour long um so so let me know what do you guys think do you want a history video on earl of warwick do you all know about the kingmaker and do i even need to bother um and um and uh, if you do what kind of you know stuff do you hear do you want his whole life story or do you just want like you know the cliff notes anyway that's probably enough rambling from me i hope you're all keeping well not long now until we can all get game and again stay safe and i will see you all again soon